more hostages released from Hamas over the last couple of days. Um, I'm not going to show the first one because um, I just don't want to show the first one. I wanted to show the second one because it was almost the whole um, deal almost fell through the hole. So let's get an update on that. Tonight, after a nerve-wracking delay that threatened to collapse the ceasefire, more hostages emerging from Gaza. 13 Israelis, 8 children and teenagers, and 5 women freed from Hamas captivity. In return, Israel releasing 39 more Palestinians from its prisons, 6 women and 33 teenagers. Another four hostages, workers from Thailand, also released. Among those freed, nine-year-old Emily Hand. Her family at first told she was killed, only to later learn she was alive and a hostage. Also, three-year-old Yehail. We met her grandfather, Gilad, this week. If you could speak to your family now, what would you tell them? I promise that I'd do anything to release them. But just hours earlier, Hamas slamming the brakes and delaying the release, accusing Israel of blocking all aid trucks from reaching devastated areas of northern Gaza and of not sticking to a commitment to release the longest-serving Palestinian prisoners first. Israel's military insisting they did not breach the deal. The Hamas announcement came just as families were gathering in Tel Aviv to mark 50 days since their loved ones were taken. People here were hoping that by now there would be more hostages coming out of Gaza. Instead, there is fear and confusion spreading through this crowd. But finally, negotiators from Qatar announcing they'd salvage the agreement with help from Egypt and the U.S. Raising hopes there will be more scenes like this from last night. Hostages reunited with their families. This was the moment nine-year-old Ohad ran into his father's arms, a hug 49 days in the making. And then... FaceTime and ice cream with friends. A comforting end to a day that began in the captivity of masked Hamas gunmen. And a long journey home. First, Red Cross jeeps out of Gaza, ambulances through Egypt, and then Israeli military helicopters. Ohad solving Rubik's cubes on board as his mother, also released, looks on. Here, two-year-old Aviv and four-year-old Raz are back in the arms of their father, Yoni. I dreamt we were coming home, Raz says. The last time their father saw them was this chilling video as they were kidnapped along with their mother. Now, holding them like he'll never let them go. Raf Sanchez joins us now. Raf, we are almost halfway through the ceasefire now. Is it possible it could be extended? Well, Jose, the Egyptian government is saying it's received positive signals from both Israel and Hamas about extending the deal one or two more days of ceasefire in exchange for 10 hostages a day. But Israel's military is not confirming that. Jose. Let me say this real quick. Y'all know where I, 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 I stand with Israel. And it didn't show they didn't say it on this video. One of the things that Israel said, the reason why the trucks was not getting through so far is because the roads it, through Hamas was too narrow. And they couldn't get the trucks in as quick as they would. <laughs> wonder what made them so narrow to begin with. Do you think it was the bombings? Do you think it was the destruction that you was doing? What made them so narrow? You you did destruction and then use that as an excuse to not help, at least not keep up your end of the bargain. I just I just want to get that out of my my system. I, go ahead, Theos. Um so I have not been following this at all. Um just I just haven't. And so this clip is the first thing that I've been made to sit through. And one of the things that I pick out of this is the reporter almost seems like they're giving a straight story. But you notice the only humanistic, uh, heartwarming imagery being shown is purely 
on the side of the Israeli hostages that were released. We're getting stories about the mother and the father and the children. And these are real things and this is real. This is a human experience and all of those things. But there are hostages being returned on the other side. So when you choose to only tell a humanizing story about one side of the equation, you are also telling the story about the other side of the equation. You're leaving it to the, the hearer and the viewer's imagination that these were all just terrorists that had to be released in order for these innocent lambs to be returned to their families. Not that these were also families being held by Israel. And then you say um, six adults and 33 teenagers. No backstory on any of these. These are all children. No backstory on any of these. 